Welcome to the Tell Me More podcast, where we invite you to be a part of real conversations with real women as we navigate the normal thoughts, feelings, and events in life as Christians. I'm Jess McKinney, one of your co-hosts. I'm Lydia Florence. I'm still Sarah Hopkins. And we made it to episode 10. Woo! Yay. Yay. We're very excited because when we talked about this initially, yeah. rem- remind me if I'm wrong, but we talked about eight episodes mm-hmm. would be a lot. Yep. Yeah. And here we are. Two plus that. Wow. Can we even Double get eight digits. in? We're pros. We did it. Right? Wow. Well, I think every <laughs> listener just generous. went, no. <laughs> no, definitely not. So I was, uh, <laughs> we're filming a parenting podcast and it'll release, I think, in January. But uh, Nichol said something about, well, I've got two pros here now because I've got Hatfield who's doing Locker Room and I've got you doing the women's podcast. And I was like, we are nine episodes in. In what world am I a pro? Yeah. Hard what no. Is, what is a pro podcaster what? Well, doesn't Malcolm Gladwell say you have to do something for 10,000 hours before you become an expert in it? Oh, bless. Isn't Just that a, a thing? Short. Long way to go. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't think short. we're there. How long is 10,000 hours? A very long time. <laughs> I'm not going to do the math. How many hours is a lifetime? That's Seriously, like, that's what it feels like. I, I can't do it in my head. I don't know. Me I got either. nothing. I got no nothing. No shot. Oh, my gosh. Well, anyway, it's been fun. I've loved this season. We've laughed a lot, which I think is wonderful. And honestly, what we set out to do and talked about some yeah. really cool things, which is great. Um, so we will be back dun, 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 for season two uh, in the spring. But it is important it, to us that season two is not um, just what we want to talk about, but it mm. is what you, the listeners, want to talk about. So... If you would hit pause right after I announce this, go to Southland Dark Church slash podcast, go down all the way to the bottom of the page, and it says, tell me more, and then there's a little form right there, and it will take you 30 seconds max to fill out, and just tell us what you want us to talk mm. about. Mm-hmm. Not guaranteeing we'll talk about it, but we will do our darndest, yeah. and it'll be great. So please let us know, and then we'll go from there, and we'll see what season two has in store for us. If you don't, yeah. we might not have a season two. And, oh. and, and I'll say Ooh, I like it. nothing is off the table. Like yeah. it doesn't, I don't know how yes. many requests we're going to get or what we can do, but if you want to hear about it, don't be afraid we'll to let, let us, us know. Yeah. 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 They don't do talk about put their anything. name on there. So if that deters you, don't just, just make a name. Make it it, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> just we just don't make care. It up. We don't care. <laughs> You know, like, lie, like that. lie, <laughs> Jane Doe. <laughs> no. yeah. uh, we got a Did you really those, endorse Jane? lying on your podcast? No, no we did no, not. No, no, absolutely Just not. Blame it on me, and no one will be surprised. Oh, be like, my oh yeah, Sarah did it. Checks. Stop. Oh my gosh, that's great. Well, we're excited. I'm excited to get to season two. I'm also excited just to hear from everybody because I yeah. really want to know. Like, I know what I want us to talk about, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's yeah. what our whole audience wants. So, we want to hear from y'all. So, great. please let us know. Yep. Um, if you haven't noticed, if you're not watching on video right now and you're just listening, we have a guest with us in the studio today. <laughs> so excited to have Keen Howard here with us today. Yeah. We are going to talk about change, which is. A huge thing that never stops coming at you. And you have lived through a lot of it, and you have done it with grace, and (laughs) the Lord has walked with you through the whole thing. And so we just want to pick your brain a little bit today and just hear from you and join our conversation. So okay. We're excited to have you. Thanks for being here. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 And we did this fun thing on our pilot episode where we asked each other really dumb questions. I don't know if you saw that. I did. (laughs) Oh no. Yeah. When you said I might ask you a few questions, I went, oh weird. (laughs) I remember. Buckle yep. up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go Get for ready. it. Well, we're going to do that. I'm um, going to be honest. But before we do, okay. if you will just kind of let our listeners know where you're at in life, if you don't mind telling them your age, that'd be awesome. Um, but just kind of the season of life that you're in right now before I ask you these fun, silly questions. Not not the whole thing. Just, not, no, just, just like, okay. yeah. Just a little well, bit. I'm 27. And, oh, no, wait, wait. Me I mean, I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I am 72 years old. Uh-huh. Uh, I am married mm-hmm. to an incredible man. I have um, two grown adult children yes. older than all of you all. <laughs> I have two, I have six grandchildren, Aww. two of whom are not Aww. a whole lot younger than you are. So I could be all of your mothers and grandmothers. Yeah. There you go. But, uh, but I, you know, uh, I'm leading a small group on Tuesday nights uh-huh. right now, and I ask a question the first night. If you could repeat any season of life. Yeah. And so I have women who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s in wow. this small group. Awesome. It's amazing. And when it came to me, I said, right now. Mm. Oh. 
And I really do mean that. I mean, yeah. it is just, it is a, I mean, I can go back and celebrate mm-hmm. several seasons of life, yeah. but we're just having a lot of, and I say mm-hmm. we because it is both of us. Well, yeah. sure. But yeah. we're just having a lot of fun, and God is, you know, I get up every day so grateful for good health mm-hmm. and yeah. for, you know, a mind that's fairly sharp. And, uh, you know, well, I mean, there are deficiencies coming and Listen, going. Listen, I'm but 38, and I say I'm that about say, myself. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> it's the real deal. But, I mean, it, it is just a fun time because we are engaging with, you know, like this is this is my favorite thing, mm-hmm. to be with women of different ages and yeah. just yeah. share – Life can be so hard, Mm -hmm. but it can also be just such an adventure. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we talk about change, I think it's it it doesn't have to always be bad change. It can be really good change too. Um, I've been retired for several years, twice, and we'll talk about that (laughs) later. I retired. I explained to God what that meant, and He said, "Well, (laughs) oh yeah, (laughs) that's not what it means to me." And so we're going to readjust your thinking. So I worked again for another 10 years, and then I retired for real, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you think. Right, God. Um, yeah. So I don't know. More yeah. than that? I mean, no, I'm that's just, great. That's yeah. perfect. That I'll share a little bit more little when picture. we talk later. Yeah. But. No, that's great. And I love what you said just about how you, you have a group full of women who are all different ages, because yeah. that's really what we hope our audience is. I know. Yeah. Like, we don't want it just to be for 20-year-olds or 30-year-olds or 40-year-olds. Like, right. it's just things women deal with all the time, no mm-hmm. matter what age mm-hmm. you're at, and mm-hmm. things like principles that you need to be reminded of and things like that. So mm-hmm. I love that you're coming in with that perspective because that's what we want yeah. in this room for yeah. sure. So okay. Good that's deal. awesome. Hey. Okay, so I'm going to ask you fun questions. Okay, here we go. Or we're, we think they're fun anyway. Okay, I'm sure it will be. So I'm going to start off with I heard from someone. I don't know this firsthand, but <laughs> if you've heard, heard it, from it's a certain a someone. <laughs> it is. That's right. Um, that you play pickleball. Oh, <laughs> And that you are quite good. And I want to know, A, how did you get into pickleball? And B, are you competitive? Oh, gosh. Who have you been talking to? Okay. (laughs) Greg's in trouble. (laughs) No. uh, Yes. I love it. I started playing about, oh, gosh, two and a half, three years ago. And it was really just a, a friend of mine who used to, I used to play tennis when I was younger, not mm-hmm. competitively, but oh, loved okay. tennis. Okay. And um, so she was really good. She yeah. coached and she, and so we were talking about tennis and she said, you know, before COVID, a bunch of us started playing pickleball. And I said, yeah. oh my gosh, I keep hearing about pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, can you love it? And so she and I went one day to a court. She brought a paddle because uh-huh. of course I didn't have one. Uh-huh. And honey, I was hooked. Oh my gosh! Okay. It, I mean, okay. it is so. So there, through just being in a facility where we play all the time, we've mm-hmm. met a group of people, and there's about twelve of us. Oh, that's and fun. we and they range in age. Most of them are about my age. Uh-huh. Some are younger, but um, they're good. <laughs> they're good. And um, you said how good? No, I'm. I'm I'm trying to be better. Let me put wow. it that way. But we play three times a week for a couple hours at a time. And you're wow. pretty good. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's <laughs> so fun, y'all. It is. I mean, it is. And okay, I confess because I can't lie in church on this thing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really competitive. Well, so, is yeah. I, so I appreciate that about you. Yeah, she I, loves how competitive I, I am. Oh, I can't. You know, when I was when I first started teaching, so. I'm telling my whole story before I get to no, it, but great. I was a PE teacher, uh-huh. best job in the whole world. But uh, I coached cheer mm-hmm. some. I coached at a couple of schools. I coached at Transy for a couple of years. Yeah. And I had to quit because I had to, I did. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was not good. I love that. You know, the, and this the first. This is your future, right here. Is, no, I just, like, I'm not big on mediocrity. You know, I yeah. just think if you're going to do something, I, whatever yeah. it is that yep. God has gifted you to do, just do it better than. Mm-hmm. And so I really wanted to win. And so <laughs> that's amazing. I confess I don't like to lose. Oh, that's much. great. I Good love that. I love it. I hadn't heard about this, is going to show my ignorance. I hadn't heard about pickleball until relatively recently. And I was like, what? Is the sport even mm-hmm. like I'm so intrigued? So now I need to like come watch or something. So it's a combination. Of, it, it's really not a combination, but it ta- it takes off on the court looks like a tennis court. Yeah. 
uh, the ball looks like a wiffle ball. Okay. It's a little plastic ball that has okay. holes in it. Yeah. You've played a couple of times. I've tried. I've wanted to go, but I've not made it yet. <laughs> the last time we six months ago, it got, you were it got going. canceled. And so we just never. How do you cancel pickleball? Somebody got sick. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, I, do you I take don't know. video when you Well, go? the four of us oh, can play. You, we'll, we'll I'll be work. gentle. Yeah. Ooh, I would love to learn. That. I want to go. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fun. But anyway, and the paddle is like a, um, well, closest thing would be a ping pong paddle, mm-hmm. except the shape is different. Okay. It's, it's more of a rectangle. Is it bigger or is it the same size? Uh-huh. It's, it's about the some of them are about the size of that, okay. not quite that big. Okay, okay. Uh, and you can get them different sizes, and, yeah. but the shape is more of a rounded rectangle. Okay, okay. And uh, there's lots of crazy rules. Sure. I mean, if I'm you've sure. ever heard anybody from play, who plays pickleball, they'll say the hardest part is who's serving and what's the score. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's true. Yeah. But, well, I feel that way about tennis sometimes. So yeah. It's fine. But it's... <laughs> I want we'll to go play. anytime you fun. want to. Yeah, it's okay. so fun. All right. I promise not to be too terribly competitive because I'm learning. But once I know no, it, I will doesn't. be competitive oh, yeah. if you are correct. Oh, yeah. She, Let's see. She I once like tried it. to compete with me to be the worst at something. Oh, that is no. true. That is That's true. how bad she is. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I, but lot. I love she it. She won, though. I just, I, <laughs> <laughs> that one of the girls that I play with, the, the one who taught me to play, sorry, is play. also very competitive. And, yeah. and so we say, it's just striving to be better. Mm. Yeah. That's right. That's, that was a really good See? twist on that, Katie. Yeah, I know. Oh, Come well. on. Okay. I'm here for that. Okay, that was great. I loved that. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I have a partner. Do these get any table? easier? I hope no. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, this one's easy. Do you have any pets? <gasps> and if you do, will you tell us about she your pets? You told her what to ask. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. We have a dog right now. We've had dogs our yeah. entire married life, but okay. we have a precious Labradoodle named Lucy. Oh. Um, do you want to see a picture? Yes. Okay, I'll get one just a minute over okay. there. We will <laughs> put the picture in the show notes. Ladies yeah. Please do. Well, ladies. She is the most, most ladies precious ladies. dog. She's beautiful and Aww, she's smart. Lucy. and She has a vocabulary of about... 40 words. Oh. But she, she's smart. Okay. So we love mm. Lucy. Aww. She's very sweet. I've met her. Yeah. Mm. She, her hair's about the color of, yeah. Aww. She's a blonde dog. Aww. She's very pretty. She's almost seven. Oh, okay. What is that okay. in dog years? I, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's like 49. Okay. I'll move on. I'll yeah, move please on. do. <laughs> okay. Uh, last thing. What's your favorite attribute about yourself? This can be anything. It can be your personality. It can be physical, anything. Oh. <laughs> no holds barred. <laughs> Nothing physical. Oh. <laughs> um, um, my favorite attribute about myself, I don't know that I even read. Um, I would say that it's kind of two answers, but they go together. Okay. I, When I love you, mm-hmm. I really love you mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just the kind of unconditional. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm all in. And I'm almost loyal to a fault. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It yep. can get in the way. Mm-hmm. But I, I would that. say, I think I'll, I I appreciate that about myself because I, yeah. I can't do anything about it. Yeah. yeah. So I love I that. that yeah. Deep and wide. We need to go back and like re answer that question because yeah. we were all like, I love my hair. I love whatever oh. <laughs> this thing is. So I still okay, think so my eyes was... are better than my personality. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, okay. Well, <laughs> so is that what you all did? Well, my eyes, I would, if you said physical, I would say my eyes because yes, they were my mom's. Are, yes, yep. Johnny, yeah. Yeah. And that's but, what was interesting is all of us with your attributes, it's something that was someone else's. Yeah. You know that where you mm-hmm. got. Got it yeah. from, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So what was your favorite? Eyes. And what was yours? My hair. Yeah. Dimples. Oh, I know. Yeah. I love <laughs> dimples. My mom had one dimple. See? My son, I, my, none of my siblings now had dimples. Uh-huh. My son has one dimple oh. in the same cheek, and one grandchild has one oh. dimple. Oh, that's so sweet. That's sweet. That's special. Yeah, I see. love dimples. Yeah. I mm-hmm. love that. In, on the face. Other places, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Amen to that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, so we're going to talk about change. That's all the funny questions I have, I promise. Okay, good. Okay. Um, well, yeah, probably. Uh, but we're going to talk about change today. And uh, just to set us up a little bit, I was kind of thinking through, like, what are what are the things that we go through that change? Because we talk about, like, you know, I'm in a different season of life, blah, mm-hmm. blah, 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 which, yes, that is all true. But you said this before, change can be good and bad, and sometimes Mm -hmm. it's within your control, and sometimes Mm -hmm. it's not. Mm -hmm. And there's all these facets to change. So it could be anything Mm -hmm. from relationship changes to 
uh, like it could be a breakup even inside of that, or it could be a friendship that Mm -hmm. just changes over time. Or maybe Mm -hmm. you have kids and then Mm -hmm. your friendship Mm -hmm. changes, Mm -hmm. but you don't lose that friendship. You know, it could be jobs. It could be health. Oh, yeah. yeah, Everything. (laughs) You live with different people over time, like just all of these things. So I'm not really putting uh, guardrails up on this Mm -hmm. topic. This is very wide and we're just going to go wherever the conversation leads us. A lot of times I feel like we have a very clear trajectory and today we do not. So uh, just wanted to set that Does that have anything to do with the guest? No, no, no. (laughs) No, it's just because like as we were talking about the uh, talking about it in general, like I think we talked about loss first. We were saying like, Mm. well, loss, what if we talked about loss on the podcast at some point? But then we were like, that's such a big topic. It's all these things. And and change even fits into that. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah. There's just so much. So we just broadened it and we're just going to go. And this may end up popping back into other seasons or something. I I have no idea. Yeah. But anyway, so that's what we're going to talk about today, which I'm excited to hear from because I we've talked so many times on this podcast about how important it is to make sure that you're pouring into people who are coming up behind Mm -hmm. you and that you're learning from Mm -hmm. people who've gone ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited to hear what you have to say, honestly. Like, (laughs) I hope to learn lots of things today and I think I will. Um, before we ask any specific questions of each other, though, I would just love if you would kind of share your story, mm-hmm. which I know you've alluded to pieces of, but if you just share yeah, your story okay. so that we can kind of hear the seasons you've gone through. Yeah. And I would just say, um, there's, you're going to hear that there's been a lot of change. Mm-hmm. And um, someone said to me, I would encourage y'all to think about this as you're processing change in your life. Someone said to me not too long ago, and I think women do this probably more than men. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we get so hung up on our current reality that we don't give attention to some of the change, some yeah. of the emotion, some yeah. of the yeah. difficulties, pain, however you, that, that we don't give attention to that. We don't validate it. Yeah. And so I call it kind of pardoning the pain, mm-hmm. you know, so no, when you yeah. go through change. Yeah. And so I think you, you, the current reality, I mean, all four of us, you know, what I know about you all, mm-hmm. we have a pretty good current reality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but it's the circumstances that we've experienced mm-hmm. over my 72 and your all's much less mm-hmm. that brought us to where we are. Right. And in the future, we don't know what that holds. Yeah. Yeah, but exactly. it's, there's going to be change, that's yeah. for yeah. sure. But, exactly. yeah. um, I have lived such a, a blessed life. I was born into a loving Christian family. Mm-hmm. My, my parents taught us how to... Um, play hard and work hard. Yep. They taught us the value of family. It was such a big deal. My mom was never happier than when she was with family. I was the middle child, but I was the only girl. So I have an older mm-hmm. brother and an older sister. We had a really, my family all lived in or near uh, okay. each other. And so I was always very close to aunts and uncles. I had a maternal grandmother who I just adored. I just, yeah. she was just the most special woman. She was widowed at 42 mm-hmm. <clears throat> and never, ever wanted. She said, I will, there will never be anyone else. Oh. So she just dedicated the rest of her life to her children and to our oh. grand. And so she was always, I had a, an incredible mom too, uh, but my grandmother was just, my, when I thought about how I wanted to be a mother and a grandmother, mm-hmm. mom, we called her mom. Mm-hmm. Mom was it. Yeah. And so... Um, when I'm in relationship with my grandchildren, I'm always going, oh, I want to be like mom, and I'm not oh. sure. You know, I'm not sure that I am. But anyway, she was a special, That's special lady. Um, when I was four, my younger brother was born, and we moved to Lexington from Maysville, Kentucky, where okay. I was born. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've lived here ever since. I graduated from Lafayette. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I graduated from UK. Heck yeah. Go yeah. Pats. <laughs> um, I graduated with a degree in, well, they call it kinesiology now. Yeah. And that, doesn't that sound smart? Yeah. It's like that <laughs> word you said a minute ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, folks, what it means is I was a PE teacher. <laughs> And uh, so I did that for 30 years. Most of the 30 years I taught PE and health. I was in administration at Central Office for a few years, Mm -hmm. and I was in administration at at Dunbar where I finished my career. Go Bulldogs. Um, And so at 30 years, I retired. Um, During that time, at age 21, 
during my senior year at UK, I married the the man that I had dated mm-hmm. for all of high school, the three yeah. years that I was in high school. Uh, we uh, had two children, yeah. Jason and Shannon. Uh, and then about seven years into our marriage, he was diagnosed as a type 1 adult onset diabetic, Okay, yeah. which is kind of rare. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's yeah. usually, you know, much younger. And it just... It just rocked his mm-hmm. world, and yeah. he he did not really ever own it. Mm-hmm. I kind of here comes my need to fix things. I mm-hmm. kind of owned sure. it for him. Sure. Um, but the sad part, and this is where some big change came mm-hmm. in. Um, I don't know whether it was in his mind if it was a coping strategy or how it came about, but he became uh, he started abusing alcohol, mm-hmm. and. Um, it became a, a real problem. Yep. Now, um, I grew up in a family where people didn't get divorced. Sure, and yeah, so yeah. Um, I can tell you that for several years, nobody knew. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Nobody yeah. knew. Mm-hmm. And then it got to the point where it was really just not safe or mm-hmm. smart mm-hmm. for the children and I to stay in that environment. And so when I was 28, I was a single mom with yeah. two young children. Oh, my wow. gosh. And but but you know just let me say when I think back every time I tell this part of my story, I'm, I just think God is so good. Mm-hmm. He is such a good daddy yeah. because he really did just take such good yeah. care of all of us, along with my incredible family and some sure. special special friends that just journeyed through all of that um, with me and and took good care of me. About a year after the divorce, he died. Oh, my goodness. And it was a combination of, you know, the abuse of alcohol yeah, sure. and the diabetes. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so legally, I wasn't a widow, but I, yeah. I felt yeah. like one. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was another adjustment. Yeah. And uh, I found myself really trying to be a mom and a dad to mm-hmm. my children because mm-hmm. I needed to be. Yeah. And then I realized that I didn't have to be. Right. And that was a nice awakening. Yeah. Um, and God just... You could, I could almost, looking back at it now, I could almost just see him flipping the pages and just saying, something, something's coming. Yeah. And I had so many precious people praying for it. And, and I didn't feel the need to be married again. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, like I didn't really want to date. That was, sure. who <laughs> let has, me tell you. Yep. It hasn't gotten better. I'll tell you that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it didn't happen. But, yeah, oh, well, we won't go there because... I, <laughs> I'm not sure he's listening, but anyway, <laughs> dating after you've been married is a whole nother oh, animal, and it's just, yeah. yeah. But anyway, I have this girlfriend that I had uh, known since middle school, and she was married to go, and we were good friends, Becky and Jerry. I'll give them credit because they deserve it. And they were they were great accountability for me during this time because it was kind of like, you going to stay here or are you going to move on? Mm-hmm. And I needed that, you know, yeah. really did. Yeah. And so they thought a good way to move on would be to go out on a date with this friend of theirs. Mm. And I said, yeah, I don't know about that. Tell me a little bit about him. And they said, well, um, she was a judge and her husband was a police officer. Uh-huh. And they said, well, he's a cop. And I went, strike one. <laughs> <laughs> I usually go the opposite direction when I see police coming. And they said, um, and he's about three and a half years younger than you. And I said, uh, strike two. I already have two children. And they said, and he is a self-proclaimed bachelor. So it's not oh, like we're looking at And wow. I said, strike three. I mean, yeah. so why would I want to, what, you know, yeah. a cop who's young and doesn't... <laughs> No living thanks. his best life. Yeah, living his best <laughs> life. I think I'll pass. Yeah. Well, they were determined. They said, mm-hmm. but you all have so much in common. You love all the same things. And so anyway, I was out to dinner one night with my children, mm-hmm. my cousin, and her children. Mm-hmm. And I got a call from Becky, and she said, hey, can you run by the house for just a minute? I've got something I want to give you. Not thinking. This uh-huh. has been a while since the conversation. And I pull up, and there's a police cruiser oh, sitting God, there. Yes. So <laughs> all of us walk in. <laughs> And I had no idea, oh uh, you know, what was facing me. But anyway, 
what I found was this really tall, good-looking guy in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, oh, I'm in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, he was so kind. He really was. And I remember Jason ran up to him and said, hey, can I see your gun? And I went, oh, well, Aww. this is probably going to take care of itself. You know, yes. he's going to run. Yes. But anyway, before we left, he said, you know, can I call you? And I went, well, okay, I guess, uh-huh. if you must. <laughs> but... Uh, so anyway, he did. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details of the oh, next two great. and a half years, that's but great. we've been married 38 years oh, wow. next year. Yeah. That's amazing. So you talk about God outdoing himself mm-hmm. yeah. as change occurred. He just, you know, we talk about it. We talk about it even still, just how he orchestrated all of that in such a perfect way. Yeah. I mean, because, yeah. you know, getting married, and he had, you know, he was... Younger than I was, but he had never been married, never really been in a very serious relationship. And so to make this family with automatic children mm, yes. could have been yeah. a disaster. But yeah. it, we, I think we were all so happy to have each other that we just kind of yeah, it just worked made it work. Yeah. Yeah. And then about a year and a half after we were married, soon after we married, the kids said, I don't like having a different name, and mm. we don't like calling him Greg. Mm. And so a good friend of ours who was a circuit judge did the adoption, and he adopted wow. them. They were really young. I mean, they were young when we got... Oh. So, I know. I know. You're oh, always, so I sweet. already loved Greg Howard. I, you know, know. I just love him even more. Do you want to oh know where God. he asked me to marry him? Uh, yes. yes. This is the best. At the top of the Rock of Gibraltar. Oh, my Whoa. Goodness. That's what? very on I know. brand, though. I know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I used to do some premarital counseling, and, and I would always ask oh. him to share, and then I'd go, do you want to know mine? <laughs> uh-huh. I'll do that. If I can't have what Greg and Keen have... What's the point of I'm, having it? Honestly, oh, that's goodness, the, seriously. And you know what? I mean, what? that's one of the things I struggle with is I want people yeah. that I love. I mean, even people that are yeah. married, I want them to have this yes. so yeah. badly. Yes. And, you know, yeah. and it looks different for everybody. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, I was talking to a friend just on the way over here who's not in a, a great place right now. And I thought, oh, I just want you to be yeah. as happy as I am. But yeah. anyway. So I mentioned earlier we have six grandchildren. Mm-hmm. We have five Big old boys, two are graduating from high school this year, and one precious little princess who we kind of have the same relationship that I had with my grandmother. She and I do. That's that's precious. Um, I guess I would lastly say that when we moved to Lexington, um, we started going to a church here in Lexington, and it was the only church we ever went to. So I was there for over 60 years, and I served in lay leadership, Mm -hmm. and then when I talked about my second retirement, mm-hmm. um, I, w- I had been retired from teaching just a couple of years, and there was a gentleman who had been on staff there, uh, and he was over. He was he led the family ministries team, yeah. and he had to leave. Oh, okay. And so I was his lay partner, mm-hmm. and they asked me if I would just step in and kind of hold the team together mm-hmm. for six months. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so ten years later, uh-huh. oh, I was going to say, goodness. how was that six months? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I was I coordinated with the people that ran children and youth, and we had a preschool, recreation ministries, mm-hmm. women's ministry. I mean, it was a big yeah. team of people, yeah. but it was yeah. so yeah. fun, and, and I loved that church. It mm-hmm. was it was great. But about three years ago, we just became you know when God at wrestling that you yep. do a little bit, yeah. my loyalty mm-hmm. got in the way, um, but we knew that it was time and. I have always just had an incredibly soft spot and uh, just a love for Southland. Mm-hmm. Brewster's a good friend of mine, mm-hmm. and um, you know Wayne was a good, but, but Wayne was such an encouragement mm-hmm. to me when I went through my divorce, and mm-hmm. um, so we, you know it just seemed logical that this would be a place that we would visit, yeah. Yeah. and it was right after COVID. Yep. Was, I, well, actually, our first Sunday here was the first Sunday that the restrictions for seating oh, were lifted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we had three churches that we were going to visit, and this was the first one. And uh, we came, and I sobbed. You sang. Mm. I sobbed through the whole service I, I, it, because I had it had been so long since I had been in the worshiping yeah. presence of the Spirit yes. like yes. I did here. Yes. And it was just like I, somebody was feeding me. Yeah. And I remember we walked out in the parking lot, and Greg said, so where do you think we should go next week? Mm-hmm. And I said, well, where do you want to go? <laughs> he said, I think we found our church. Oh, and so 
we just, uh, you know, we love John and Scott and all of y'all who lead so well and, and do it in a remarkable way. So we're just kind of exploring, you know, like what yeah. God wants yeah. to do in this last quarter of our uh-huh. yeah. game of life. Well, and you stay busy. Yeah. Too. You are a busy woman. I, I, I like being busy. Yes. I do. I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I like being home with Lucy some, mm-hmm. but I also, and Greg, but yeah. he's not <laughs> home much anymore Greg. right now, <laughs> as you know. Yeah, that was, an, that was another change. I haven't talked mm-hmm. about that, but we'll let that one go. <laughs> but. Uh, no, that's great. Well, I appreciate that. I also like to be busy. When we were talking about rest, I was like, this is not something I do yeah. well. I just very much enjoy like fast-paced Always having something to work on. So I don't know. I'll tell you something, something you can think it. about to help you with that. Yeah. Because I'm not big on rest either. But I <laughs> learned years ago that if we have the perspective that we work from rest mm-hmm. as opposed to resting from work, yep. it gives me a whole different mm. perspective on it. That's good. That is really good. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So if I know that if I give myself need to internalize that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it, it makes me yeah. feel better. I mean, it does. Yeah. It'll go, okay, I, I need to get some sleep tonight because tomorrow I have things to do as opposed mm. to, I'm tired. I need to right. like, oh, no, yeah. I'm not. Yes. You know. Yes. <laughs> the defiant, I will never rest. <laughs> I'll sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that so many times. I don't think I've ever said that, but yeah, I've probably felt it. Yeah. <laughs> that's good advice, though. That's such good advice. Yeah, especially I need to hear it. Even in the context of change, I think that's good advice because, again, we've talked about like how your emotional health and everything, a lot of that comes from being well-rested, being yeah. in the word, mm-hmm. things like mm-hmm. that. So that's that's very good advice. Yeah. Um, I want to dig into some of the emotions that come with change, both good and bad. Mm. And we talked a little bit about emotional maturity last week, mm-hmm. so this is probably a good segue to get mm-hmm. us there. But um, how we – trying to figure out how to phrase this – whether the change is positive or negative within our control or not within our control, what is your reaction in general to those kinds of things? Like, are you like, you know what, let's go. I love change. This is awesome. Or I do love change. Do you I do too, so actually, Jessica. We must be sisters. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think I mean, so. Or are you like, oh, I don't like that. I'm going to fight that with everything mm-hmm. I got. Or are you somewhere in the middle? Like, we're just mm-hmm. – and I will start because I love – change. I was that kid who had her furniture in her bedroom and every night I was changing it around because yeah. I just wanted something fresh I still and do something that. different. Yes, yeah. I do too. Yeah. My husband is probably like, oh, can we just leave it alone for a little <laughs> bit? We always have a project going. You know this. Yeah. Um, just because I, I love the freshness of that. I love being spontaneous. I It bites me in the butt sometimes because I'm impulsive, but I just, I don't know. I love it. Something about it. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just like, oh, it's super creative and it makes me happy. Mm-hmm. So I'm usually if you throw something at me, I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. I don't love it. <laughs> <laughs> but <Shocked. laughs> I am more of a settler than a pioneer in yeah. life. Okay. But, all right. All right. But it has been one of the ways the Lord continues to make me trust him mm-hmm. because yeah. it there's nothing I can do f- yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yep. And so he continues to give me the grace to kind of look at it and go, well, it's yeah. going to happen, so we mm-hmm. might as well just get over it. Like there's not a lot of emotion to it uh-huh. now. Like it used to really rot my world. Yes, mm-hmm. for sure. And now it's a, I hate this, but we're just going to mm-hmm. have to go through it yeah. and mm-hmm. – Climb on up because there's no other. There's really no other choice. Yeah. Right. Oh but I, yeah. I'll probably complain all the way up. <laughs> I love that. And then that. you get to the top. You're like, <laughs> now we're fine. I feel like we're the two people going up the hill, and I'm like, let's go. This is great. This is going to be so fun. And you're like, would you shut up? I'm saying all the wordy dirties <laughs> in my head. <laughs> yeah. That's on par. Yeah. I love that so much. <laughs> I think I like change when it's my idea. Oh, when I'm oh, so true. When I'm the boss of the change, yeah. I'm like, yeah, this is a good thing. <laughs> but, you know, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And Amen. I think that when change is not my idea or when it's unexpected or out of my control, I yeah. struggle quite a bit more with it. Because mm. on the one hand, again, like when, when it's my idea to change something, sometimes I have a hard time just like hunkering down through something. I want sure. something fresh and I want change mm. and I do want to build or pioneer something. Uh-huh. But then other times, like if my plans go askew or if the Lord is trying to lead me another way, Mm -hmm. then I struggle Mm. against that, I think, quite a bit more. And I think for me, a lot of it comes down to control, you know? Yeah. 
we yeah. we laugh a little bit here on the podcast because um, some of us show up with notes and some of us don't. And <laughs> I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a planner. I want to, you know, kind of like have things where I feel like they're a little bit in my world of control. And so when, when change fits in within that, I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, great. But when change falls outside of that, I'm like, eh. I don't know how I feel about this, but I don't mm-hmm. think that I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I love that because I also have notes. However, mine, I'm like, oh, I glanced over it. Here we go. Let's talk. And if I need it, I'll refer back to it at some point. Which is weird given that I am I know. The, probably the biggest control freak at the table. <laughs> Yeah, and arm wrestle. I'm the one. <laughs> you beat me. We know this. Yeah, she has a kinesiology degree. She would beat you. Yeah, she Absolutely. plays pickleball three days a week. So yeah, she I just wins. I don't. This kind of this doesn't bother me. But if yeah. we come in and everything's different, it'll take me a good thirty minutes. If to, I said Sarah, I need you to lead this, you'd be like, I'd be out. <laughs> I'd, I'd suddenly Would you get, really? I'd get sick. Oh, I'd oh. no. I'd it'd be one of those things You'd like okay, we're great. just gonna have to do it. Yeah, like you immediately turn that switch. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like when someone goes into the hospital, mm-hmm. it rocks your world, yeah. and then you're you go okay. Well, yeah. here's Here where we we're go. gonna yep. live for the yep. next week and a half yeah. or however long. Yeah, we're just gonna live here in mm-hmm. this room. This is my new home, and I'm gonna be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that I can make that switch pretty quickly. Sure, yeah. but. It's, you know, sometimes change is just an event, right? You know, yes. and then sometimes change is a, a season mm. where there's growth or there's yeah. the opposite of growth, whatever yeah. that would be. Yeah. I mean, and so I think, it, like, I'm a little bit like you. I, I like spontaneity, but mm-hmm. I also am very organized, and mm. so yes. I yes. I do like change that I can control and. Mm-hmm. There was so much in my life where Mm -hmm. there was so much change and I couldn't do anything about it. But Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, there's nothing like unpredictable, uncontrollable, seasonal change to either knock your legs out from under you or cause you to just trust Jesus beyond anything you could ever imagine. And so I think it depends on the type, the longevity, Mm -hmm. the purpose, the predictability, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I do think in those in those. Ex- what I'll call extreme seasons of change. So mm-hmm. like when something does happen that just totally rocks your world, like mm-hmm. you're saying, that your response is exactly what I thought of. Like I'm either going to turn to the Lord and go, okay, I trust you. Mm-hmm. You got it. Mm-hmm. I have no idea what's happening right now. Yeah. Or I'm going to try to control it myself, yeah. which yeah. is always the worst. And it never works. Yeah. Yeah. It does never. Never. And there's not a happy never. medium between those no. two. No, there's not. You're, you're mm-hmm. just not going to – I've never met a person who is in between them. They're like, no. I kind of trust right. the Lord and I kind of have control. Yeah. Right. There's nothing uh-huh. that will get no, you there. I agree. No. The yeah. I do think that while – we surrender those things to the Lord and go, yeah, this is outside of my control, and you know what's going to happen, and I trust you. There is also an activeness to that. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we just sit back and go, well, whatever's yeah. going to happen to me, I guess I'll just take it on the nose. Right. Like there's an active decision to go, okay, I need you to lead me through this. And sometimes, like in the hardest seasons of my life, it's been me hitting the floor on my mm-hmm. knees going, God, I got nothing. Absolutely nothing. What do I need to do? Yep, that's exactly and that's the action piece for me. While mm-hmm. other times, like there's a very clear path forward, or it's something mm-hmm. exciting where I'm like, I know exactly where you're leading me. Let's go. I'm so excited. You know. Yeah. But yeah. either way, there's an active piece to it where we shouldn't just accept our fate, so to speak. Yeah. And just go. Eh, okay, here we are. And I don't think that's God's desire for no. us at yes. all. I mean, I don't. Yes. I, he does want us to be obedient mm-hmm. and follow His purpose and plan. Right. But I think he wants to use all the things he's yes. given us yes. yeah. in order to achieve what it is that he's trying to do. <clears throat> Greg and I did prison ministry for several years mm-hmm. before COVID. And um, it was so funny. Those girls were so, and guys, were so restricted. Mm-hmm. I mean, like they moved yeah. as a group. Yeah. They mm-hmm. ate as a group. They slept in a room, you know. So they had no control right. mm-hmm. over anything in their lives. But, you know, they shared with me that it was the first time in their life that they felt safe. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. You know, so sometimes when mm-hmm. when God's in, you know, we can just kind of mm-hmm. nuzzle up and feel mm-hmm. like, okay, you've got, I'm going to just really hang with yeah. you because yeah. I don't, I haven't got anything right yeah. now. And that's the way they were. Mm-hmm. You do hear that a lot when people think that following Jesus is so restrictive. Mm-hmm. But when you when you get in, you do find it's it's 
that comfort blanket almost. Mm-hmm. You, I find that it's not nearly as serious as following Jesus, but when you put a budget in place, sure. for yeah. me, all of a sudden I can breathe mm-hmm. because now I'm not spinning out of control yeah, because right. I'm not mm-hmm. yeah. paying attention to what yeah. I'm doing. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, you, I instantly feel it every right. time I redo my budget because mm-hmm. I tend to go off. <laughs> I go off. But... Um, can that. we not talk about spending money? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah. Greg we'll might that. listen to we'll this. We'll do that season two. Okay, good. those things I'm trying to yeah. But so I, I do think that we forget that that total surrender mm-hmm. yeah. really is the safest place for us mm-hmm. to be. Yeah. And probably why we fight it so and hard. And why not? I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so much easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really is. I know. It's I don't, just, we just convince ourselves it's mm-hmm. not. Well, and I think we have to have a high level of trust, too. Like, mm-hmm. your relationship has to be solid with the Lord to yep. go, yeah, I do trust that you actually do know what's best for mm-hmm. me and that I don't. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that's where I have an advantage yeah. because I have such a long history with mm-hmm. God. Yes, yeah, long exactly. History. Yeah. You know, and I've watched yeah. his faithfulness mm-hmm. over and over and over, and he's yeah. never failed, yeah. you know, yeah. that yeah. I will never leave you, Keen. You know, mm-hmm. I have a plan for you, Keen. Mm-hmm. You know, and you live into that. And so the more you trust him, yes. the more he becomes yeah. Yeah. trustworthy. Yeah. You know, Do you ever write any of that down? I'm a terrible... I don't journal because I was yeah. afraid someone might find it once I die. <laughs> 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 to which someone told me I need to get over myself, which was really wise. But I also am just not... That's naturally... Not naturally yeah. what I do. But so that you have kind of a, a record of God's goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> There's been a couple of times when someone has asked me to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, that million, what is that lady's name? Oh, well, anyway, she asked us to do our our story, and yeah. in that, it was kind of a the history of. I think my topic was um, a, pr- a praying wife or yeah. something like that, yeah. and so it was like how has prayer impacted mm-hmm. your journey? Yes, and so I've done it, but not a lot. Yeah, no. But I that's just, a good idea. I'm just trying to think. I, should, I would probably be a lot more grateful if I could look down and go, no, no, this is where he's been faithful. Mm-hmm. Don't forget. Yeah. Because you see that in the Old Testament a lot. Don't say, forget, don't forget, that's don't why forget. Moses was like, remember, the Lord did yeah. all of these things, and I'm going to take an entire book to tell you about all, all of, it, of it, even <laughs> though we yep. just talked about all yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> because they were so forgetful, and yeah. aren't we, honestly? Yeah. Like, yeah. I will literally run into almost exactly the same situation. Point in case, I may have talked about this once already, so if this to repeat. So sorry. Um, when I found out I was pregnant with my first daughter, Chuck lost his job. Yeah. And I, I did talk about yeah, this, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay. So learn from it. Trust the Lord. Surrender to him. He's got a great plan. Lovely. Second child, get pregnant with her. Chuck loses his job. Nuh-uh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Don't get, I know. Don't have any more babies. <laughs> I know. Well, we were like, we're done. We're done. <laughs> but, and of course he took care of us, but initially mm-hmm. like, you're still like, <clears throat> oh no. Oh, no. And you'd think it wasn't that long in yeah. between the two, firstly. My kids are three and a half years apart. Like, it's not that long of a time. And yet somehow I was, like, initially going, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. And As then, if this time he'll all of a sudden, after millennia, yes, yeah, yes. this is going to be the thing that Where he's, he's not going to show up. And he, yeah. Yes, he doesn't see this. Yeah. Yeah, I love Obviously. Keen the way that you said – the more you trust him, the more like trustworthy he becomes. Mm-hmm. And the truth is that we serve a God who, like, we can kind of test that. Like, mm-hmm. we can yeah. we can be like, all right, I'm in. I'm going to follow the Lord. And that's what it means to trust him. But he will prove himself faithful again and again and again. And yeah. the more you experience that... I think the more willing you are to trust mm-hmm. that and the yeah. the more you surrender over to God, the more you will find he is worthy of that. And right. yeah. So, uh, you know, if you look at other relationships, mm-hmm. I mean, it, <laughs> trust is earned. Yes. yes. You know, yeah. you think about it. And so I don't, it's a shame that we feel that way, but God has earned our oh, trust. Gosh, mm-hmm. yes. I mean, mm-hmm. not just historically, but yes, personally, right. yeah. Yeah. I, there's just no way that I wouldn't. Right. Like you said, why would why would this be the one time yes. right. song you all sing? He yes. won't. Yeah, <laughs> thank he you. Won't. Because I was singing it, and I was like, "You guys are doing this on purpose, and I can't sing it." Just do it. The <laughs> song is "Firm Foundation." FYI, yeah. I will link it in the notes, but I will not sing because I will not buy you coffee. I'll mm. buy the coffee if you'll sing it. Oh, oh there you go. Oh. Oh. My coffee cup's empty, so I could use it. I will Come buy on. the coffee. Oh, I love Come that on. song. Oh, my goodness. I do, too. There was also, we we also wrote a song that said again and again, and mm-hmm. she's over here, and I'm like, 
Again and again. It's killing Jess from the inside out. Truly, I am struggling right now. It's fine. Um, I'll make a deal with you. Every time you sing on a podcast, I'll back off if you'll do it. Oh, this is so She's up in the ante right here. We back. Let's go. So I'm excited. <laughs> okay. You've, you've done it to us, Keen. <laughs> no, I'm telling Sarah's you. Sarah's like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like being on a <sighs> show tune show with her. <laughs> Jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> Ball change. I'm so happy right now. Okay. Um, so my next question um, talks about like preparing ourselves. We talked about how rest prepares you for being able to deal with things, you know, being in the word prepares you. And this Mm -hmm. may be the answer to the question, so we may not talk about this long, but is there a way where you can do the work on the front end to prepare yourself for the changes that are going to come throughout your life? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that looks different over time, Mm -hmm. which maybe you can speak into that Mm -hmm. a little bit, but what are the things that we can do now to help prepare us to be able to handle things that are thrown at us, especially the ones that are outside of our control? That's a really good question. You know, I don't know if this is the answer to the question you're asking, but one of the things that I have found helps me when when change is imminent. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I'm trying to think of retirement. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, is if you stay in the present mm-hmm. as the change is occurring, you just kind of... Because going backward yeah. or even trying to get out ahead of God... It, it mm-hmm. can cause pain, disappointment, confusion. You know, mm-hmm. there's just so many things that because you're, you, can, you can't change the past, right. you can't really control the future, yeah. but you can affect the present. Mm-hmm. And so I am, whenever change is coming or we're in change, um, if, if I can just get up and, and deal with today, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it makes it. I, I used to tell couples when I was working with them, you know, just. When there's a problem, just eat the elephant one bite at a time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. because it's a big elephant. Right. And if you try to swallow it all at once, uh-huh. you're going to choke. Absolutely. And, maybe, and so I think, um, and, and when there's unexpected change that mm-hmm. comes, that's a that's a totally different thing. Yes. And then, you know, that's that's just when that surrender has mm-hmm. to come in. Yep. But I think for me perspective Mm -hmm. is such a big piece of how I have dealt with. I hope my daughter doesn't listen to this because she's (laughs) going to, but she will. But that's okay, Shannon. I have to say this. But when Shannon got got married, uh, she married a boy from Lexington, Mm -hmm. but they moved to Nashville. He had gone to Belmont. Mm -hmm. And he too. Did you? Yes. We've talked about Neil. I've told you. Neil's a musician and he's gifted and Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we really thought that God had given him those gifts to use professionally, yeah. and yeah. that just is not the way it's turned mm-hmm. out. And so when they went down there, it was for the purpose of pursuing that. But mm-hmm. I remember the day they left, you know, Shannon said, Mom, we'll be back. I mean, you know, we'll right. be back. And they've been married 21 years, and they're still there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um, that is a that is an ongoing change yeah. because mm-hmm. I just really want her to live sure. here. Yeah. Like, yeah. Next door to me. Of course. Yeah. And Jason too, if yeah. if he would be so inclined. He's just in, in Shelby County, so it's right. not quite as far. But but I think when I'm dealing with that, it's a matter of perspective. And so mm-hmm. I have to remind myself, they have such a great life down there. And the kids mm-hmm. are thriving and so are they. And you know, it could be California. You know how you sure. just yeah. yeah. And so I think when you're in that uncontrolled uh disappointing uh-huh. maybe change if you just keep the perspective of what's good about this. Mm-hmm. You know, what? Yeah. Because yeah. there is. You know, he yeah. works all mm-hmm. things for good. Yeah. And so I've had to do yeah. that several times. Sure. And then I go, oh. Yeah. I know. I just assume not <laughs> like it. Yeah. I think what you said about when you try to control the, the future of it mm-hmm. and that it just creates this pain, this unnecessary mm-hmm. pain. And I've you never really think about about it that yeah. way, but how when you say it out loud, yeah. how yeah. stupid it sounds <laughs> yeah. that you're purposefully putting yourself in a position yeah. of pain yeah. right. down the road, and yeah. no one would ever knowingly do that no, or purposefully, not on purpose. yeah. Mm-hmm. And how just not thinking yeah. through it and not thinking about it puts you in that. How a totally different thing, but you were talking about your kids. How has the way that how those relationships changed over the years and the way that you pray for them and the mm. way that mm-hmm. 
you kind of interact with them because I know now that I'm an adult and mom's older going, okay, Mm -hmm. what's that line of honoring her, Mm -hmm. but then also wanting to take care of her. And that that, it's so hard. Being an adult child is so hard Mm -hmm. and we don't talk about that a lot, Mm -hmm. but probably because I don't take the time to also listen to her as mom and as an adult. But what are some of the things that you've learned that have helped you kind of nurture those relationships as you've gone along? Yeah. We were blessed. Uh, Our kids were really compliant Mm -hmm. and easy. And if you ask them why, they would say, "Uh, well, dad was a cop. (laughs) (laughs) And mom knew everybody in the school system. Uh And so, like, Mm -hmm. but, you know, truthfully, they told us one time, uh, Y'all worked so hard to give us a good home and a good life. We didn't want to disappoint you. Yeah. And I, that is that was the sweetest mm-hmm. compliment, yeah. I think, that we could have received from both of them. But uh, And so uh, my prayer has always been that everything they did would be purposely to be obedient to God. Yeah. And, you know, they're normal Mm-hmm. Sure. Kids and young adults, and and so on. There weren't. It wasn't perfect by yeah. any means, mm-hmm. and there were times when we needed more prayer than others. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I don't think that the way you pray for your children ever changes because the perspective is still right. yes. the mom. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's a mother's heart, so you mm-hmm. want them to be mm-hmm. healthy and happy and even successful, yeah. and mm-hmm. you know all those things. But I think it's also again, perspective is you have to surrender a little bit of that to their relationship with mm. God. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, it, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you all see that with your parents, yes. I'm sure. It's like I may be praying for something for one of the kids or grandkids, but they, they're they praying too, and I don't mm-hmm. want to pray against them, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. And yeah. so, yeah, um, yeah I, you, never, you never stop, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On your knees, on your face for all the things. Mm-hmm. And they both have had, you know, situations where they've needed more prayer than others. Sure. And, uh, but you just, you're never not a mom. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I, we just talked about this um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Some friends of mine, we were just talking about how you pray for your kids and what you pray for. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the number one thing that Chuck and I have always prayed for for our kids above everything else is that they would know the Lord and model Him well. Because mm. I think if 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 they do that, all the other stuff is taken it care does. of. It does. You're you know? right. Like, yes, I want them to be successful. I want them to be good at things, sure. But I don't care about all that stuff because He's going to work all that out as long yeah. as they're living inside of That's His right. design. Yeah. yeah. So there's that's a whole tangent, sorry, but I know, I know but it's like, so true. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good. And just prayer in general is a good way of making that surrender choice. I was sitting there thinking earlier as you were talking about um, needing to turn things over to the Lord in the big situations. If if we practice that in the small things, yeah. mm-hmm. I think that's that's how we prepare for mm-hmm. the big things yeah. that we mm-hmm. don't know what's coming. Yeah. But we've already learned that as a practice. Like, yeah, yeah but I turn all of this over to you it's anyway. what you do. Yeah. 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 Which is difficult because I think in the small decisions, sometimes I'm like, eh. he you don't care. You don't think about it. He does care, though. Yeah. But <laughs> it, it will rear its ugly head when you're in those emergency yes. situations yes. or the really tragic things that life will Hold, yeah. yeah. When you it's don't, it's gonna have, happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, we, mm-hmm. you know, Greg has this men's group that meets on Tuesday night, and they they are so faithful to pray for each other. I yeah. mean, and it's big stuff, yes. you know. And now I have a group of women, and they have stuff, and, mm-hmm. and so we're just surrounded yeah. by people who are yeah. hurting and the relationships and and a lot of physical illness and yes. all this stuff. And yeah. you just and and we look at each other and go. We're not, I mean, we know it's coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know that. It, and, and I was going to say a minute ago, in terms of changing and prayer and all that, one of the things that I'm so conscious of is how to age mm-hmm. and and let my children take some responsibility when sure. they need to as it's needed. You know, like yeah. I don't yeah. want to, I want, I don't want to be the lady when I walk down <laughs> the hall where people go, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Here she comes. You know, I mean, I want I want to be this, you know, 90-year-old where yeah. people go, hey, what's up? You yeah. Know? yeah. But I also want to be cooperative mm-hmm. with yes. my children. And, yeah. and so I do pray that God will just give me a sincere heart to mm-hmm. surrender 
you know, decisions and things as mm-hmm. I need to. I'm not ready. I'm not giving him my keys yet or anything like that. Right. But, sure. But, yeah. but it is. It's giving him my keys. <laughs> but, you know, but I, I just want to be, it, it is something you have to start yeah. thinking about. Yeah. Like at some point you almost switch roles and mm-hmm. it's so hard. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. It's so hard. Yep. I'm sure because we're it with in the my... baby stages, and I can only imagine what it's like later. Yeah. And I know I was a pain in the butt. Sorry, Mom and Dad. I was oh. a pain in the butt for my parents, so I'm fully intending for that to happen when my back? kids get oh, older. Yes. Yeah. So. This, this will shock you. I was a very mouthy child. <laughs> what? I thought you were very mouthy. Mouthy. Yeah. angelic. Oh, oh, really? No, isn't that shocking? <laughs> yeah. That is so unlike me. You were not. Oh, oh girl. The amount... I got soap in my mouth. I got oh. baking soda in my Ooh. mouth. My mom would mix vinegar and chocolate milk and make me drink it when I said a wordy dirt. Oh. My mouth oh. ran away with Listen, me as a child. I looked at my mom not that long ago, and because she would always do that, you just wait till you have children. You'll know yeah. one day. Mm-hmm. So about six months ago, I looked at her and went, "Never gonna happen." Jokes <laughs> on you, Nancy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine. You no, know, imagine, King. I can't. Okay. Just, the Lord can. has done a lot of work in my life. Well, he really I'll, has. I'll tell you that. See he how sure good has. He is? Yeah. And I, I worry that he's going to smite me by giving me a child just like myself because wow. yeah. then I'm really in for it. So well, I'm they're the best kind, though. Oh, yeah. When I was teaching, you know, mm-hmm. the little quiet, cooperative, I'm going, you're sweet. I love you. But boy, that one that wants to knock my head off, I just mm-hmm. love fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. They keep you on your toes. That's for yeah, sure. That's for sure. Oof. Yeah, well, sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> We're all sorry. <laughs> we love you, and we thank you for yeah. what you did yeah. for us. Yeah, amen. <laughs> and amen. I keep saying that a lot now, and I'm like, hopefully that, that'll resonate with my children. And I just, be great. I remind <laughs> Mom that I am her. Like, yeah. This is your fault. Are you? Yes. You don't like it? This is all you. <laughs> oh, you did you this. You did this. <laughs> Aww. Blame game. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Um, I was thinking as you guys were talking about, you were talking about the relationship changing between your kids, but I was thinking about, um, my, like the health things Mm. that come into our lives and stuff, especially as you get older, my mother-in-law, and I think you guys all know this, but she has battled cancer for a while Mm. and I have been so, this is going to sound silly, I guess, but I've been so inspired from the get go because I, yes, I'm I'm sure she went through like I'm scared, I don't know what to expect, mm-hmm. those kinds of things. But watching her in the hospital, mm-hmm. like when she's about to go into brain surgery, talking to people about the Lord and mm-hmm. how faithful he is and how good he is. Oh wow. I'm I literally just sat there and I'm gonna cry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just sat there going, Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. this is a testament to what the Lord can do. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. using her to get all these people who have no idea who he right. is. To know who he is. Mm-hmm. And she's in the middle of, like, the biggest fight of her life. Yeah. Just like, it's fine. I mean, I'm going to go. I trust you. I'm surrendered. Here yeah. we go. And then she did it again. Like, she had another surgery and did the same thing, which I'm like, okay, let that be me. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah, yeah. me but too. Shoo, oh, me I just too. can't. Like, I want to get to that point in my life where I'd love to say that right now that would be me. But sure, we're going to question and we're mm-hmm. going to struggle and we're going to fight against what we feel like is not right. But even in all of that messy, he had such a good plan Mm -hmm. and she could see that. So I'm like, okay, well, let me see that, please. But it's just interesting. Right. Like I, she walks with the Lord so faithfully and I'm like, you've encountered change in your life. I know you have. You've talked to me about it. And there have been times where she's not handled it gracefully and she's been upfront about that. Oh, but me look too. at what right, and so have I. But look at what she's learned. So yeah. she's learning from those lessons, like you were talking about journaling. She didn't even have a journal about it. She's yeah. just like, yeah. he's got me. Yeah, I know he does. That's there, that's the goal. Yeah, <laughs> there was a woman in my Bible study group this morning, and she said, "God can't do anything with what you don't offer Him." Yes, or she said mm-hmm. it a little bit mm-hmm. more eloquently than mm-hmm. that. But I sat there and I thought, it's, "Yeah, he's just, he's waiting because mm-hmm. obviously with Sharon, he didn't go." Let me give you this cancer so you can really glorify me. Right, yeah. Let me, right. But we live in a fallen world. Yeah. But because you have it. And this stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so he goes, if you'll give me that, I will do something amazing with yes. it. Yeah. Yeah. Watch me. Yeah. I didn't write a lot of notes for this podcast, but I have thought about just like the pain that comes with change. Because mm-hmm. change can be good, but a lot of times change comes yeah. with pain. And mm-hmm. so one of the things I made a note of was that the pain of living a life that is not God's for you 
will be greater than the pain that might come with change if it's God's idea. Yeah, yeah. that's so good. So it's not to say that even if you go through change that God has ordained that it's not going to be painful. Sure. Pruning can sure. hurt, oh. but it's going to hurt a whole lot less than you trying to white knuckle in the other direction. Absolutely. Yeah. And the Lord will do something with it. Like that will be towards an end that is glorifying to him, mm-hmm. that is for yeah. your good, mm-hmm. that he will not waste your pain. Right. Yeah. He won't. No. And so... That that's a hard lesson to learn because it's not to say that it's pain free, yeah. but it's it's a different kind. It's it it's is. purposeful pain. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, it goes back that's to really good. when he says, "In this world, you will have that, trouble, absolutely. but take heart. Yes. I have overcome mm-hmm. the world." Yes. Yeah, and just in that is all the grace and love we could ever need. Mm-hmm. It is the truth of our situation mm-hmm. and the promise of His goodness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all in one sentence. Yeah, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. 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 Thank goodness for that. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, well, I, I'm not going to wrap this up yet unless we're ready to wrap, but I did just want to ask, are there any, like, lessons or little snippets that you want to share with us before we wrap up that you're just like, hey, when we talk about this subject, people mm-hmm. need to know this. Okay. I'm ready. This is profound. Okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I'm not in charge. Mm. Yes, yes. That's true. Yeah, How that's long true. did it take you to realize that? <laughs> that like, I was this many years old. Yeah. 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 I was today years old. Every day going on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a, ah, uh, in mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And there's also a, whew, in that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that I'm not in control. It's not about my timing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pa- you know, I, I quit paying, praying for patience. Oh, a long man. Time yeah. Ago yep. Because, you know, whenever he wants you to learn how to do something, he gives you ways to do it. And so yeah. I'm so patient, God. I don't need any more practice on that. Yeah, me too. So timing is um, timing is not mine. Yeah. Um, and and I tell you, the older you get, sometimes I think, again, perspective is uh, it's it's his timing, and um, and that's okay because. Yeah. I've been around a while. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. you know, it's okay if, if yeah. you wanna if you wanna do it now or if you don't want to do it now. Uh-huh. You yeah. can you can tell me about it when I get to heaven. Right. Yeah. So that's oh. I'm, I'm I know I'm kind of taking making that lightly, but it no, is I mean, but... just really understanding that uh, me being impatient is not gonna change mm-hmm. God's plan. Yeah. And so yeah. I just have to kind of give it up mm-hmm. sometimes. And then I would say that um I have learned with change that if I can focus on something other than myself mm-hmm. during change, yeah. that it just goes back to perspective. You know, yeah. I think if you if you can find a way to engage with others, help others, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. be with others, then whatever you're going through mm-hmm. sometimes just doesn't quite yeah. seem yeah. quite so bad. Yep. Yeah. That's or good. good. Yeah. I I think the other piece of it is and we do this with our kids. We remember that they're not really ours. Yeah. Oh. You know, we're stewarding something God's given us yes. really well. And really that's our entire lives when it comes down to yeah. if we can get to the place where our perspective is not this is mine because mm-hmm. it's not. Yeah. We are his. Yeah. So everything belongs to him. And if we are stewarding our lives well and our hearts well and our minds well and our bodies well, then yes, there will be pain. Mm-hmm. But again, there's also the promise of the end. Yeah. And yeah. everything that happens in between is inside his control, and we just don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So. Okay. Thank goodness. Very good. That was great. Well, this is fun, Keen, guys. will you come back every week? Yeah, seriously, this I is know. so fun. Yeah. I love this. <laughs> I'll bring the coffee. No. Yes, please. <laughs> I'll sing next time. It'll be great. You also said something about Firm Foundation again, and I was like, mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is this just? I was gonna say you just have to kind of mm, all the I'm way through. Literally biting yeah. my tongue sometimes. Yeah, it's fine. And you don't sing why? Because you have to buy coffee. But yes. Yeah, we made it's not our, worth it. It's girl. I'm honestly, gonna build it in the it's budget. Not, well, it's not the money. I'll take it out of the security budget. It, <laughs> oh, thank, thank you, you Greg. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell him. You need to put in an extra four or five hundred dollars. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh wow, I'm gonna give him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. 
<laughs> um, should we should we give our little teaser announcement? Like, talk about what we're gonna do in December quickly. Mm-mm. Well, we might as well now. I yeah, we, we can't say that and not do it. Well, we could. <laughs> I was gonna say, can James just cut that out? He can. But oh, I'll go ahead. Well. I mean, otherwise nobody will know. That's we should share. Tis the season. Almost. Yeah. Oh well. There's that. That's we right. could argue with Almost. that. Almost. Um, well, I'm not gonna share. You all share. No one takes away, girls. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, and that's all I'm giving you. Now, do you have that's to back coffee because you did that? No, no because I can't sing, but just yes, can. Yes, you can. No, no, that's no. A lie. We're not. That's there's not a, even. That's, there's a difference between being able to sing in a choir. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Than I'm, singing I'm, solo. I'm you all. I tried worthy, out. But. I tried out for the fifth grade choir one time, <laughs> and this lady came at me and said, oh. "Honey, is there anything else that you want to oh. do?" Oh, it's bad. My son-in-law, who is a gifted vocalist, was standing by me one Christmas. <laughs> Neil, you did say this. <laughs> and he said, just move your lips. Oh. No. And you said making a joyful noise. That's, that's one reason I love worship. I can sing so oh, loud. Yes, and you nobody sure can. can. Hold on. You're you sure can. You're that it's not too loud for you to worship. That's interesting. It's not too loud? It's not too loud. Oh, turn it up. No, what do you mean? <laughs> Why is I'm it too just saying, loud? You know, sometimes people say it's too loud. Oh, heavens no. Is it me? I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I wear earplugs. <laughs> I, so no. here's the thing. I love... <laughs> James, I, are you taking notes? <laughs> I love Southland music. I love Sunday mornings, but I am a little overstimulated sometimes by the noise. And so I won't <laughs> leave. I want to be in there and I want to be worshiping, but I always have their pink and yellow. And I have pink and yellow <laughs> earplugs, and I'll just real discreetly put them in because I can still hear. I'll keep worshiping. I love, it. I love that you're doing that, and Keen's like, turn it up. 2772. <laughs> the only thing that overstimulates me is the scream. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes I'm thinking people that, you know, that are visually stimulated, oh, like man. sometimes I'm going, my eyes are all mm-hmm. over yeah. the things that are on. Yeah. But no, I love the noise. <laughs> well, I it's not it. noise. That makes me so happy. I know. So happy. <laughs> no. I mean, I have zero control over how loud it is in the room, but it makes yeah. me happy nonetheless. <laughs> because I'm the same way. I will sing as loud as I can as long as no one can hear me. Mm. Yes. And so, so when we back off the mic and are like, y'all sing it out, you're like, no. I oh, drop. No. My, my <laughs> okay. level goes way yeah, down. Too. Oh, then yeah. I just move my lips. Okay. <laughs> if okay. I'm like hosting on a Sunday and I've got like the mic on, my worst fear <laughs> is that someone is accidentally going <laughs> to leave on the mic and they're going to hear me singing. I'm like, Dear God, please don't let that happen. They did. Yeah. I didn't sing, but there was one Sunday I was producing, and they left my because I can talk to them uh-huh. on stage, and I was letting them know it was time to move on, and it was like the female mm-hmm. voice of God. Mm-hmm. You can go now. <laughs> it was terrible. I looked. I was. In was I on that week? Horror. I don't feel like I remember this. That's I don't so know. Funny. We're like, is that in the house? I broke out in a sweat, oh. and someone said, "Oh." It was during communion, too. Oh, no. So this holy moment, and then there's this, which we all know I hate my voice, and I've apologized to people listening to this. Then, but, yeah. That's, that's so hilarious. funny. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. So yes, Lord. what's going to happen in December? Okay. I'm going to give it away if y'all aren't. We're going to oh, tell You're people. that kid. Let's I just am. open the presents early. Yes. Yes. That's me. Oh, It'll be I'm jingly and jingly. Everything. I'm just... All right, give him a give him a little teaser. We were gonna do eight episodes initially. Yeah. And then we were like, we're gonna do ten. And now (laughs) we've decided we're gonna do eleven, but that's actually really it. There's not another one after that. (laughs) Yeah. But the eleventh one is not going to be on a serious topic or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna dive deep into our hearts. We are gonna talk about Christmas. (laughs) Yeah. And we're gonna celebrate Christmas and talk about all the traditions and maybe we'll have hot cocoa. Can that be the drink that I bring? Yeah. Sure. Okay, great. As long as there's peppermint in it. Oh, no peppermint for me. No. I'm coming back. I'll sit over there with James. You guys are picky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't want my hot chocolate to taste like toothpaste, so. (laughs) Okay. And whipped cream. Okay. Wow. Okay. Whipped cream, peppermint, no peppermint. <laughs> no I can peppermint. Sing. Done. Extra okay. chocolate. Got it. Great. So we hope that you'll come back for our 11th episode um, just to celebrate Christmas together. If you're subscribed to the podcast, it will automatically let you know that it's here. It will. Yeah. But temper so. your expectations. It's not going to be our episode of great depth. It will be our More episode like of great fun. <laughs> yes. And as good as Jess is, <laughs> Mariah joy. Carey will not be here. No. Indeed. Nope. In fact, yeah. I will not sing that song because Lydia has already done so. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm a woman of the people. What can I say? 
<laughs> we were, I, I should save this, but I'm not going to. We were in the car uh, on the way home the other night, and the girls were like, can we turn on the radio? Well, we turn on the radio. Guess what's on? Yeah. Mix-mas. Mariah Carey. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. And at the top of their little lungs, oh. they sang it. I'm going to break through. I'm going to sing. They're like, ha! <laughs> like it was this whole thing. And I was like, whoa, why do we know this song so well? Every word. Well, like, and the thing is when it comes on, on, it's like, yeah. it's like you can't control yourself. It's like, it's, it's like white people when the YMCA comes on and you just, you have to do the motions. You can't not do it. You're, that's you're true. compelled. And that's how I feel about the Mariah Carey song. And I don't make any apologies for it. It awakens something in you and you just go, <gasps> it's Christmas. Uh-huh. So She's our, our theme song for episode 11 will be Mariah Carey. <laughs> Done. I love it. I think it should be your fade in, fade out song. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, it's my gosh. So I can't wait. That's funny. Yeah. Well, it'll be fun. It'll be a good yep. time. And it will, like I said, it won't be terribly in depth. But we will have a great time because we just love having conversations. Yep. And that's where we'll we're here for. see you there. So, yeah, we will catch you whenever that episode drops. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for joining us. And don't forget to go weigh in at the bottom of the South and Dot Church slash podcast page on what topics you want to talk about in season two. Yeah. Kane, thank you so, yes. so oh, much. Yes. Thank you. All. This was fun. This, yeah, a this was pleasure. Fun. Yep. We loved having you. Thanks yeah. for being oh, thank here. Thank you. All right. We'll catch you guys on our next episode. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.